Okay, so today I'm going to teach you my favorite sumo wrestler storytelling move. And it's where you take your, your human story and you heat it all up and you flip it on its back and you turn the bad guy into your master teacher. Okay, so there's this is particularly really good for you if you're dealing with uh, betrayal, forgiveness issues, um, if you've got abandonment issues, uh, stories around love. This is going to be a great technique for you to put into instant practice that can really shift the energy of, what, of how the stories are living through you. Um, I'm going to ask a huge favor of you, okay? I'm going to ask that we don't do trauma bonding. I'm going to tell you a story around betrayal. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask that we don't do any Me Too's. Oh yeah, that happened to Me Too. That's like, we don't need that. That's not actually moving us energetically forward together, okay? And we're going towards the healing of it, not staying in the muck of it. I'm also going to ask for you to, as I tell the story, all these judgments are going to emerge, right? You're going to judge the person I'm telling you about. You're going to judge me in it. And if you get stuck in that, you might miss the, the reason why I'm coming to you today, which is to give you this really powerful tool to change your own story. So I'm just going to ask you to breathe as you saw, catch and release those those judgments as they come and go. Okay? We're all human. They're there, right? Okay, that's, that's that. Okay, that's our prep. So, I'm, and this is more of factual. I'm not telling you like a big story. I'm going to tell you the facts and I'm going to talk talk to you about uh, how to take the facts that happen on the human, the human level and bring it into a bigger soul story. So the facts are I fell in lust with this guy many, many years ago. It's like over a decade ago. And we were so hot for each other and we were having so much fun together. And then it became very obvious that we were meant, not meant to go any further together. But we were kind of curious, or at least I was very curious about well, maybe there was some, some time in the future when the timing was better. You know, we were more riper in our lives. And I asked this question of him because he, I knew he had to go sow his oats. And I said, hey, um, go sow your oats. Do you, do you. Just don't sleep with any of my besties. You know, that was my, that was my big request. So a little bit of time goes by and I introduce him. He knows a lot of my besties and I introduce him to one bestie in particular who was a masseuse because he needed a masseuse. And, you know, she actually calls me up and she goes, Hey, you know, such and such dude just called me up and he asked me out on a date. And I, I knew how this guy rolled. Right. And I said, Oh, you know, yeah, go for it. Have fun with him. See what happens. Right. So not true what was really real in me you know but I I just wanted to be cool with it all I wanted to be good with it all well sure enough yeah they were totally hot for each other and they fell out in lust and whatever else you know whatever else their story is is their story you know what happened for me in that experience is is like literally it was like someone put a bomb inside my heart now I'm not saying that anything is logical anything is right but that's literally what it felt like inside my body Poof, coldly blew up and when I explained that to them, when I shared that to them, I, my worst nightmare came true. My, my story of abandonment came rushing to the surface. I lost him as my friend. I lost her as my friend. And it was like all over, right? And so now I'm dealing with, ooh, this old story of abandonment has just been like, wherever I'd been holding it and carrying it and stuffing it down, it was like all up in my business. It was literally the only thing I could see. I couldn't even see through it to, to normal life. I couldn't feel, it, it was just, maybe you've dealt with this, where it's like the feelings are so big. And I was, you know, just trying to process all of this. And I was angry and I was upset and couldn't, it wouldn't let me kind of, I couldn't be at peace. You know, I was really in the process of it. And there are two things that really, truly helped me move through um, better than anything else. And so I want to give you those two techniques. One of them is I literally went to earth, you know, and it was as like a, it was, it was a last resort action. The pain was so big in me. The suffering was so big in me. The resentment, just like that, the feelings that I didn't have names for, it's just the suffering was so big. I didn't know how to let it go. And so I went to earth and I told her that and I laid flat eagle on the earth, my belly right against the earth. And I prayed and I said, please take that, which I don't know how to let go away. Like, please take it away. You know, and I really felt something energetically shift in that. And so like that, that communion, that connection with earth, that asking for that allyship, even though it didn't seem logical or real or even possible it was truly just one of those like last ditch efforts of like i need my sanity back i need my clear thinking self back and then something happened in that space 
And what happened was, was that I got access to my greater self, my, my, my soul self came on board. And that's where I learned this technique, where I started to see something really different. All of a sudden I could start to see that, wow, this was an incredible gift. I was being given the gift to really come into active presence around forgiveness. I was really being able to see myself of who I really wanted to be in the world. And I wanted to be a lover. I wanted to be able to love without all that armor. And that's what's happened. Like he gave me this opportunity to blow my heart open. My dear friend, Craig, I'll never forget this. I told him I have this whole broken heart. And he said, oh, you mean your heart's been broken open? Oh, mic drop. I was like, yeah, my heart's been broken open. What do you do in those moments? And so the sumo wrestler move, is when you say, okay, I'm a human dimension, not so pleased with this dude. But on the soul dimension, right? This is the storytelling sumo wrestler move where human dimension, kind of a jerk, flip it over, sumo wrestler move. Now we're in the soul story. Now he's my master teacher, right? He's my master teacher that's giving me an opportunity to access a part of myself that I never would touch without this initiatory experience, right? We're doing, we're doing all this reframing of the story. Okay, so we're saying, oh my gosh, I came to a point where I can't go further in my own growth evolution. And you know, the, those are great initiation moments. They, they might feel like you're getting stuck, but really it's like the world saying, oh, this is like a birth, you know, it's like the canal that you've got to thread the needle. You've got to be able to get through. Life gets really tough on you. You get this tough constriction. I got to get through. Okay, I've got to claim my life. And in this case, claiming that life was saying, yes, I want to be a lover. Okay, that means I've got to learn how to forgive. And the first person I had to forgive in this situation was myself, because where did the betrayal begin? It began at home, right? She asked me if she could go on a date with him, right? She asked me about it, you know? So it's like, I gave full permission, even though I was completely against myself. Had I been really honest, I would have been like, oh, that's the guy I've been talking to you about all these years, and I'm totally uh, still hung up on him, and, and I was probably gonna hit on you, and, and you know, I'd probably still say, do what you need to do, but just know that this is the whole situation instead of just saying, yeah, go for it. You know, that was what was honest and true in myself. When I look at every story of betrayal that I've talked to, and I've talked to a lot of people about their stories of betrayal, a lot of people will come back to that the betrayal started at home in the sense that they didn't trust their instincts. They didn't trust their intuition. They didn't act on something that they knew, you know. And so it gave me access to that part of my sovereignty, my, my inner power, my inner potency. The other thing is that when I got in there and I'm like, oh my gosh, this issue of abandonment, thank you, master teacher, for giving me this opportunity to see what is mine to heal around abandonment. Gosh, what a great opportunity, you know? So it's like, oh, I got to do the work on that, you know? And, and it only could have been someone who I cared deeply about that could have brought me to my knees and humbled my soul enough to break open the armor to be able to do that work. And it wasn't ours to do together, right? It was really, that's is why in the soul story, this is right, we're working in the soul story. He gave me this opportunity to do my soul work. Okay. So when we're dealing with this, you know, it's like, we're not spiritual bypassing. We're not saying that the human experience was all cool and all good and all that, you know, it's like, you still, it's like, what did this teach me about boundaries, about clarity, about clear communication, you know, uh, how to be honest with myself. And again, how do we, how do we, um, reap the harvest of these moments because each of the these moments of great struggle and strife you know it's like they're there for our soul to get to really do some deep growth so I hope you get to have fun with the sumo wrestler storytelling move so take your take your person take the person that you think is kind of being a jerk or unforgivable or causing some suffering or some pain the bigger the bigger they are um, either in your personal life or even in the political world, you can, we're playing a game, okay? We're opening our creative channels. We're asking for guidance. We're asking for the ancestors to come talk to us. And we're saying, show me a perspective that I can't see on my own. Okay, so that we're asking for help. It's a humble thing. It's not your brain figuring it out. And then see what wants to emerge. When you say, if I recast you as my, as my master teacher, what is the gift that you're offering me? And then you have to let your ego to be soft enough and tender enough to actually hear something that uh, is a new thought or a new idea. Okay, so I, I want to hear your ideas. How, how do you recast somebody? And just so you know, this is also an example of a medicine story. 
And so it's like when we work with stories as tool for healing, and I'm about to do a course on that, and I'd love to tell you more about it, and I'll put links in. Okay, talk to you soon.